Best of r slash tales from retail episode 130. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Welcome to the great state of Ariosna. While I worked at a big box retailer, I was one of the only staff members on site over 18 that was not a manager. This meant that more often than not, I was working the cigarette slash snuff slash vape pod counter. This wasn't really a bad gig. It was also the 20 items or less lane. So at least the people there went quickly. However, about midway through a morning shift I had, two people came up to my counter, both boys. They put down two cans of Monster and asked for mint flavored jewel pods. I raised an eyebrow at this, because these two looked around 12, 14 at the oldest. Me, may I please see your id? Customer 1, what do you need that for? Me, I'm sorry sir, but my register won't let you purchase nicotine products without me seeing your id. Customer 1. Just give me the jewel pods. Me. Not until I see some id. The other boy digs around in a wallet and hands me an id. I don't remember the exact age, but it put him over the legal age to buy nicotine products. I thought for a second. Maybe I'm just bad at guessing ages? I'm partially blind, so I've kind of gotten used to being wrong about things like this. But something in my gut told me to take a second look. And then I noticed something. Their id was supposed to be from Arizona. Their id had Arizona spelled wrong. It was spelled, Ariosna. I suppressed the urge to break into a laughing fit, hit the call button to bring a manager over. I told them that I needed a manager's approval to sell nicotine products, and they bought it. My manager, C, took one look at the id, and didn't hold her composure like I'd managed to. She then used a walkie-talkie on her belt to bring over one of the salaried members of the management team and a guy from the rent-a-cop security company we used. The kids turned ghost white as they were led off by assistant manager A and cop C to go call their parents in the manager's office. But not before one of them managed to call me a fucking snitch. Sorry boys, my job's more important than your jewel pods. Better luck next time, and please, if you're going to use a fake id. Use one with the state's name spelled right. Thank you. Next. You couldn't have checked the shelves first. Sorry for the format. I'm on mobile. So, I work in a retail slash discount store that, I'm pretty sure, is specific to the East Coast. We sell the basic stuff. Food, snacks, home decor, makeup, toys, electronics, outdoor stuff. You get the gist. So today... I'm over in the home section setting up a new summer display. It should have been set up like a month ago, but because of delayed shipping due to COVID-19 we barely have half the stuff that's supposed to be on display. So, if you work in retail you know how annoying it is to have to set up a new display. I'm in the middle of taking down the shelves from the old display and repositioning them to fit the new one. So there I am, sweating balls, in a 80 degree store with barely any working air conditioning. Trying to remove the shelf from the display, I finally get it off and stop to take a breather. Here comes Karen. Can I bother you for a second hun? And before I can bother to give her an answer, she starts explaining that there's an outdoor chandelier in the garden section and she wants it. The problem is, apparently it's the last one and it has no box, as it's obviously the display model. She asks me to check it out and see if I can find the box so she can buy it. I go over and take a look and notice she's not alone, her husband is with her, I start pretending to look for a box, I know for sure that it doesn't exist, and probably got thrown in the bailer months ago but I get the idea that she's not the type of customer who's going to let me go without at least pretending to look for it, but before I get the chance, her husband starts explaining to me that he wants to make sure this model actually works first, it has no battery so I call one of my managers, because she's my friend and ask her to help me out. She goes to find some batteries to check that it works, but not before telling Karen's husband that she believes the reason this model is on display, we don't display every model, just some, is that a customer originally bought it and returned it because one of the lights didn't work. As she's off finding batteries, Karen's husband starts explaining to me that those guys who returned this light to y'all, there's clear signs of damage and I can tell they used it for a while before returning it so that's why one of the lights doesn't work. I let him keep explaining, but I know this isn't true because the signs of wear and tear he was describing were basically invisible, 
and the rust he pointed out was clearly just a chip in the paint that probably happened during assembly since it was right next to one of the screws. At this point, the whole ordeal has already taken up about 20 minutes of my time. My manager returns with the batteries, and lo and behold, the light doesn't work. Just like every one of us could have predicted. Karen's husband goes to open his mouth and say something, presumably to ask her a discount for the broken light, and then, oh, look, I found them, says Karen. Apparently, she turned 45 degrees to the left of the spot she'd been standing in for the last 20 minutes, and realized that this display model was not the last one we had, as she had earlier exclaimed. In fact, there's an entire shelf of them, right next to her, the whole damn time. TL. Dr. A. Karen wasted half an hour of my time today, by having me and my manager check a display model for her, since she claimed it was the last one we had. Almost half an hour later, after we figured out it didn't work, she realizes she is standing next to an entire shelf of them. In hindsight, I should have definitely looked for more of them. But, honestly I was leaving in an hour and I just wanted to finish that damn display and go home. Lesson learned. Thank you. Next, a customer yells at me for no reason. I work as a cashier at a retail store. I was checking people out, and there were two managers also checking people out. I was checking this customer out, and I also had to answer the phone. I think I took two calls. I checked her out while talking to people on the phone. After I hung up the phone, this customer yells at me saying that am I going to check her out or answer the phone. The manager was there. So she stepped in and told her that she was sorry. I then went to another register to check another person out. The manager said that I, or the person on the phone, I don't know which, had a disability. I hear her asking for an apology, which she gets, but she said that it wasn't a sincere apology since they weren't talking in a sorry tone. The other manager was there, and he said that she needed to leave. She didn't leave at first. The manager that told her to leave said over the radio that police might need to be called. She did leave, though, soon after that. Thank you. Next. An eventful end to my shift. This guy came in to return a lawnmower. Except that he's clearly drunk. So drunk that he could barely walk. Me and a co-worker went out to his car to help him unload it and when he opened his trunk, an empty beer bottle fell out. The man had a bag full of them so I'm surprised only the one fell out. I went to help him move the mower to a cart and caught a whiff of the alcohol on his breath. He reeked of it, my mask didn't protect me from it unfortunately lol. After helping him, I told my team lead, then went and told the manager who was in charge at the time. And then I punched out because my shift was over lol. I stuck around though, because I wanted to see what happened. Manager showed up and took over the guy's return. There were some issues. The computer said the mower had already been returned, and dude started getting agitated. I turned around for a second and he up and disappeared while manager was trying to figure it out. As this was happening, some customers came to the service desk and told us that another guy, on the other side of the store, seemed lost, bewildered, and it appeared that he had went to the bathroom on himself. Now I would have paid more attention to the second guy initially if not for the first guy reappearing. Freaking knife in hand going to town on a leaf blower box trying to open it. Wanted to test it out I guess. He couldn't return the mower and instead bought the leaf blower and some wood. At one point he was laying down on top of the wood on top of a cart. Manager headed over to deal with guy number 2. As he's heading to the other side of the store. I ask manager if he called the cops on drunk guy. He said he hadn't as he wanted to see what the guy would do first. So I told him at some point. This guy was going to get back behind the wheel, something I wasn't comfortable with what over, and he left his dog in his car. Did I mention he left his dog in his car? Dot. That convinced my manager to call the police. As he headed over to see what was going on with second guy, I headed back to see if drunk guy had left yet. He hadn't and the cops showed up while he's still figuring how to keep the wood on top of his truck. Cops talked to him for a bit headed off to the other side of the store. Turned out manager called the cops on both drunk guy and bewildered guy. I went to tell manager that the cops had arrived and I asked him what was the deal with the second guy. Bewildered guy said he wanted to use the bathroom but it was locked. It wasn't. He then refused to leave and straight up fell asleep slash passed out in a chair. More cops showed up. An ambulance was called. 
and bewildered guy was taken to the hospital. The cops told drunk guy the second he decided to get in his car and drive, they'd arrest him. So what did he decide to do? Headed back into the store, returned the wood he just bought, and bought something else instead. The parking lot had like 7 cop cars in it by this point so drunk guy was clearly spooked. So he grabbed his dog and wandered off. At that point, I'd seen all I needed to see so I went home 90 minutes after my shift ended lol. Thank you. Next. I didn't authorize anything. You don't have to. I used to work at a retail store and I have a bunch of stories of crazy customers since I worked with returns. This one lady comes in wanting to do multiple returns. The first one went fine. She didn't sign anything because she didn't have to and I gave her the receipt. The second return had more clothes, but they were purchased for a lower price. So when I told her the total being returned she flipped out on me. It was like 4 items totaling to $20. She said she didn't want to return them in that case because it wasn't the right price. She told me I was giving her less than what she paid. So I searched up the receipt and turned the screen towards her. I then proceeded to scan each item so they would light up on the screen showing her the price she paid. She then started yelling at me telling me it's not correct and that she didn't authorize the return. I told her that just like the first return she didn't need to sign anything for authorization, to which she yelled again that she didn't authorize anything. She is throwing a full on fit at this point and it's right in front of her two daughters who are both looking at her like she's embarrassing them. I had the items on our side of the counter because the items had been returned and she was being refunded. She took the items and I told her they need to stay on this side until the manager reverses the return. She again yelled I didn't authorize anything. While we are waiting for my manager I go help another customer and when I'm in the back getting the new customer's order I hear the lady talk to her daughters. He says what does he think I'm going to do? Walk out of here with my items? When I come back I say mom those items have been returned and you are getting a refund. So currently they belong to the store can you guess what she said next? I didn't authorize anything. Eventually my manager comes back and I tell her what's happened and she goes over to the customer to fix the situation. This lady then tells my manager that I called her a thief, I am incompetent, and that I need to be retrained in customer service. My manager just nods and gets the issue solved. She also tells the lady that with our system the customer doesn't have to authorize a return. When the lady leaves I go to my manager and tell her that I didn't call her a thief. To my relief my manager said oh I know, I didn't believe a word she said. I loved her so much. Thank you. Next. You are not important. This is just something that happened me before the quarantine on my country. English is not my native language so sorry if there is any error. This is about that occasion I told a client about a secret of the industry. An employee is more important than one customer. For the record M is me and K is the angry woman. You know why. For the context by that time I was sleep deprived, my neighbors throw a big party and even after the cops asked them to turn the music down they didn't stop until 5 a.m. So yes I was piss off. I work on the deli section of a supermarket and before you can start doing your work and serve customers you need to do some chores you can't ignore or do later. That's the rule. So I went in the section and my co-worker was serving the customers while I was doing out chores, like checking the books and the inventory putting a stamp and signs etc. She was really busy. Just a couple of people on the line. I heard a finger snapping and a hey you. I took a deep breath because if there is something that I hate is that and whistle from clients. I turned my head and asked the woman yes mom. K. I want 500 grams of this. Pointing at something I did care. M. Sorry but I can't serve yet. My partner can attend you in a minute. K. But I asked you to do it. M. Mom I can't until I fill those books. Wait a moment and my partner will do it. K. On an angry tone. No. I can't wait. You're free so do your job and give my ham. M. Sorry miss I can't until I end this. That's the market rule. By this time my companion was just enjoying the show and serving another customer who arrived after K because she was too busy asking me to her service instead of wait a little. K. Are you refusing to do your work and serve me? M. No. I'm telling you I can't do it but my co-worker can. K. O. Oh, but I don't want her to serve me. I want you to get up off your lazy ass and serve me. I realized by this point she was just feeding her ego or something. 
because my co-worker already attended three more people. M. No. K. Excuse me. M. I need to do this paperwork before or I'm gonna be on trouble. K. If you dare to refuse to serve I'm gonna get you in trouble. M. Okay now you can get in the line and wait because I'm refusing serve you. K. That's it. Call the manager. M. Okay. I took their radio and talk. Manager we have a client who want to speak with you. K put an ugly smile on her face and told me I'm gonna see you get fired after this. Maybe next time you're going to think again before disrespect a customer. On this point I lost all my customer service attitude. I had a terrible night and now she is jibing me a terrible day. I told everything on a calm but cold voice. M. Do you really think they are going to fire me because you say so? Do you really think you are that important? There are literally a hundred of people here right now. Hundreds maybe a thousand on a regular day and even more a month. One customer isn't special. What makes you think they are going to fire me and went through the process of replace and training a new guy because of you? I'm far more important to the company than you. K. I'm a client. M. I'm a long time useful employee. I probably could insult you as my wish and the only consequence for me would be a nagging or a warning if I'm too loud. K had a sour face. She obviously could think on an answered. My manager arrived. Me and my co-worker explained what happened and even a lady customer who was an employee on a local store, confirmed what I say and she then offered to look for another customers to testify. The woman wasn't expelled or arrested but the manager told her why I couldn't serve her and agree with me when I refused to do it. She got a half kg of ham and leave. Is not a big thing but I'm proud of it. Thank you. Next. Third day in a row someone has tried haggling. Today, a man approached my counter. The transaction was already going pretty rough. His accent was very thick, and he was extremely indecisive, and ignored the answer to every question he asked. He kept insisting that I had to give him a good deal because his friend said I would. I guess he overestimated my patience. We're currently running a promotion. Buy one. Get up to two things half off. This apparently is not good enough for our lovely customers who refuse to stay home. Him. I want this cross and chain, but I want the chain to be half off and I want a discount. Me, the cross will be half off, and the discount will be the buy one, get one half off. Him, no, you give me good price. Me, yes, I will, I'll give you the discount we're running. It's a better price than normal. Him, okay, and you give me discount. Me, yes, I will give you the discount we're running. Your total is 179. 20. Him, no. It needs to be $160. Change price. I want discount. Me. Yes. This is the total with your discount. It comes to $179. 20. Him. 160. Me. I'm not understanding. Him. I only have 160. You need to give me a discount. Me. You want me to change the price that corporate sells these items at? Him. No. I want discount. Me. Yes, your total, with the discount, is $179.20. He paid with a couple hundred dollar bills and left.